Hello, I'm Yoko, and welcome back to Year 5 of Galaxy Clan. If you're new, I suggest checking out the Galaxy Clan playlist, which is linked below or in the card above, as this is part of a series. Now, with that said, you guys are not prepared for this year, and I say that because I sure wasn't. Before we get into the Cats and Star Clan, I'm going to say up front that a lot of cats died this year, and I won't be drawing them necessarily in deaf order, but more so kind of grouping ones that are relevant to each other to make some commentary easier. But with that said, let's just get into the cats in Star Clan, sadly. Starting with Aspen Runner and her son Twigclaw. I will now also say that everyone who died this year died of a contagious disease. It didn't occur immediately this year, so it shouldn't be the same one that killed Poppywish and Stoneleaf at the end of the last year. Though some cats over time grew paranoid that this was somehow a curse from Stoneleaf. As for Aspen Runner, she died at 95 moons old in the first wave of the sickness and was the first casualty. Before that, she had been doing great in the clan and even had her own apprentice. She even faced down a dog head-on, chasing it off despite her earlier attack that she had. Sadly, Lake Tree could not save her mother from the sickness and she was the first of many. Twigclaw had tried to help out in the medicine cat den and grieved with Lake Tree. Unfortunately, by doing so, he was in close contact with the sickness and he died two moons after his mom at only the age of 41 moons old. Just like Dust Cloud, he was taken away from his daughter while she was still only an apprentice. If she has kids someday, I really hope this isn't some Burdock family curse and that it doesn't continue in the future. I was so sad to see both of these cats die, and I feel really bad for Lake Tree considering, like, all her family is dying, but the next cats, I'm gonna be honest, hit me even harder. Both of Ravenspot and Aspen Lily's sons died due to the sickness. They did gain their full names before that, and the young warrior Hazel Runner died at only 15 moons old, in the same moon that Aspen Runner did. Before that, he was an excited warrior and had been trying to hang out with the older warriors like Blue Light and Burdockfoot. His brother Tawny Sun had taken up the medicine cat role right before he would have finished his warrior training. He was having a much better time in this role until all the sickness appeared, and then he was devastated to be unable to save his brother who might have caught it in the first place just by hanging around him too much. Tawny Sun died two months later at the age of 17 moons, just before Twigclaw. And again, I hope this is not a trend of Medicine Cats tragically losing their first apprentice at a young age, like Poppy Wish lost Squirrelpaw. I also think since he switched paths so late, he actually stayed an apprentice for a little longer than his brother. And after his death, I said he wore a hazel leaf to remember him by. I was so sad to see both of Aspen Lily and Ravenspot's kits that they were seemingly given by Star Clan be taken away so quick. It just didn't feel fair, and I had really wanted to see how they end up later in life. I had su such high hope. But that's clan gen for you, sadly. There is still one more death this year, and it's a big one. The last cat taken by the sickness was Sandstar, who died at 153 moons old. And we have officially lost our first leader. He now watches his clan from Star Clan and hopes he made the right choices. He always saw the clan as a big family and did his best. The one time he called for a battle led to unnecessary death and he deeply regrets it. He wishes the next leader good luck and hopes they make the right choices when it comes to tough decisions. Before he died, he actually ran into a fox that injured his tail. Also, these cats are on an older version of the game and I've said before that I don't plan on moving them, but I mentioned Sandstar had probably lost a life to a dog in year two. But I imagine Sansar only had one extra life since Frog Dapple was the only Star Clan warrior at the time of him becoming leader. Leader. As for future leaders, if they get the prompt almost lost a life in the game, I'm counting that as losing a life unless they're on the last life. And I'll randomize a reason. I'm also not counting any actual deaths they get in game until they've died at least nine, uh, eight other times. Sandstar being the last cat to die of the sickness made a lot of cats believe the rumor that Stoneleaf had somehow caused this disease even more, as it seemingly stopped after he got his revenge on the leader that never seemed to see him. The sickness was never identified, as I'm saying it wasn't Green Cough or anything like that, but a few cats started calling it Stone Cough. And that's all the cats in Star Clan. This is the most amount of death in one year so far, and I didn't even use one of my potential population control events which I plan to do whenever we get to two pages of cats so I don't get overwhelmed, but mass illness was one of my potential options. 
I did flip a coin on each living cat to see if they had gotten sick as well, just for world building to see who caught it. But yeah, before we move on to drawing our living clan, we have a new leader, which means there was a leader ceremony. And earlier on a community post, I asked you guys what these cats would have for a moonstone slash moon pool situation under the guise of curiosity. So let me quickly go over that if you haven't seen my community posts. I ended up going with just a person's idea of a waterfall that reflects moonlight with a cave behind it, naming it the Moonfall. And I combined it with Murky Water's suggestion of a field of fireflies that look just like stars on Earth, naming it the Starfields. Thank you for the suggestions, and let's hop into the ceremony with a more narration style. Burdockfoot walked with the stressed lake tree through the star fields, the fireflies surrounding the uneasy pair. Upon reaching the moonfall, Lake Tree led Burdockfoot behind the water and into the cave, not risking jumping through the water with all the sickness in the clan. Burdockfoot laid down, feeling the spray of the water, and closed her eyes. Once she opened them, she saw a familiar face, Squirrelpaw. She could feel the presence of others around them, but before she could look around, Squirrelpaw stretched up her neck to give Burdockfoot her first life, for accepting fate. Some things simply cannot be changed, and you can't stress about it. Kendra walked up next and smiled, giving Burdockfoot a life for enjoying freedom, reminding her to enjoy the little things in life, like the wind in her fur. Burdockfoot teared up seeing her dear old friend Yellowbush approach next, who grinned back at her. She gave her a life for courage, though she warned her not to be reckless with it. She stepped aside, revealing Dust Cloud. Burdockfoot could barely contain her emotions seeing her mate once again and embraced him. Dust Cloud gave her a life for love. He praised her for doing a good job raising their kits in his absence, stepping aside to show their son. Cricket Flower put on a brave face and told his mother to be a great leader. He then gave her a life for determination. Poppy Wish approached next. She commented how early on she knew Burdockfoot was destined for greatness, though she admitted she was also aware that she would face tragedies. She gave a life for compassion, saying she wishes things were different for Stoneleaf and that he could be here as well. Aspen Runner was next, her scarred face now glowing a sweet blue. She gave a life for a mother's strength, though she noted Burdockfoot knew this well. She said she now must treat the entire clan as if they were her family. Twigclaw replaced his mom, glowing a blue as well. He smiled but sadly apologized for no longer being able to protect Hopwhisker or Palepaw himself. With that, he gave her a life for protecting others, asking her to use it for the entire clan. Lastly, Sandstar, who looked much healthier and younger than he had been in Moons, walked up and smiled. He put his nose to her forehead, giving her a life for wisdom and said her old life was no more, and from now on she will be known as her new name, Burdock Star. Star Clan is giving her nine lives, and she must use them to serve Galaxy Clan well. And with all her lives given, her old clanmates and loved ones cheered her new name, Burdock Star. Now we can finally get into the clan. As you just saw, the new leader is Burdock Star, who is 111 moons old, and has been leader for about five moons at this point. I say she's doing a good job so far, before becoming leader, there had been a few more birder skirmishes with Creek Clan, and once the sickness had completely left, she had everyone doing either battle training or reinforcing the camp. While she doesn't like Creek Clan, she has no plans to go into battle, especially during Leaf Fall or Leaf Bear, right after a deadly sickness. The clan has had enough death in her eyes. She wants the clan to be prepared in case one does happen, however. Though with that said, Creek Clan has been backing off towards the end of the year, seemingly busy with their own problems. Since becoming leader, Burdock Star has named three new warriors, and the nursery has a queen in it. Though there's something making her fur raise in regards to the nursery that we'll get into much later. She had a meeting with her senior warriors about this situation and what to do, while that queen had been out of camp. She told her clan not to mention anything yet, and she's waiting to confront this, studying the situation first. She's learned a bit from her past rash behaviors, and with all her age and wisdom, she feels a little uneasy and has a bad feeling still. On to our new deputy, Ravenspot, who is 64 moons old, and drawing Ravenspot without Aspen Lily feels like a crime, so he's here with his mate. Aspen Lily is now 61 moons old and isn't feeling exactly playful right now. Deputy-wise, you guys seem to either want Ravenspot or Blue Light to be the deputy, but since Blue Light never got an apprentice, Ravenspot got the position. 
Burdock Foot chose him as he has grown into a strong, dependable warrior. He is level-headed when he needs to be, and he has done a great job mentoring her daughter, Hop Whisker. He's always there to make sure things don't get out of control, and he's a really good choice. While he is currently grieving the death of his sons, he has been doing his duties diligently. The deaths hit both him and Aspen Lily really hard, Aspen Lily being the one that was more outwardly emotional in camp and broke down devastated that StarClan took their kits after finally giving them some. And the coin flip decided that both of these cats had caught the disease as well, so I imagine they might feel a little guilty for surviving when their children did not. Ravenspot has done his best comforting his mate in their shared period of grief, but Aspen Lily's really down right now. Now that some moons have passed, the pain has lessened a bit, and they have recently been talking about the idea of finding a surrogate in order to have a new litter, though Hazel Runner and Tawny Sun will never be forgotten. They are taking some time to think this over, and we'll see if they have more kits in the future moons. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, Aspen Lily just got a torn ear while fighting a rogue towards the end of the year. Next up is our medicine cat, Lake Tree, who is now 34 moons old, and she is really not doing good. Before things got bad, she received an omen of a sickly bird falling from a tree. Without touching it, she buried the creature using a stick to move it, and soon after that, the sickness began. The disease stressed her out, and during it, she lost her mom, her brother, her apprentice, and her leader. She's second-guessing her abilities and regrets not immediately ordering a quarantine like Poppy Wish had done with Stoneleaf. She feels a little lost in the clan after losing her close family, but seeing Twigclaw's daughter helps her feel a little less alone. She's tried to grow closer to her last remaining kin and is trying to bond with Hop Whisker, though she's a bit upset right now. Together, they talked about how Twigclaw had always been there to help others, even at the cost of his own health, fondly thinking about the past. Lake Tree is also once again stressed being the only medicine cat, but she doesn't think the kits currently in the nursery would be a good fit, as they make her nervous for certain reasons that will be discussed later. She did, however, receive a prophecy from Poppy Wish that I'm choosing to say was the sentence, There still lives a pale hope. Because for certain reasons, that will be interesting for the future, but let's move on to our warriors. First up is Mintfer, who's new, and I actually invited her by accident, so whoops. She's a former loner who is 118 moons old, so she's about to retire. She is wise, and I'm thinking she might have just joined seeking a comfy life for a bit whenever she gets to Elder Age. She was invited into the clan by Aspen Runner and Hazel Runner right before the sickness broke out and both of those cats died. And the coin flip decided that Mintfer was never sick, otherwise I would have been a little suspicious that she brought this to the clan in the first place. But she's good. She also just got a torn ear from a rogue at the end of the year. Strangely, we suddenly started running into a lot of rogues lately. Surely that won't come up again later in the video, wink wink. I'll be honest, Mintfer hasn't really done much, and there's not too much to say, so let's just move on. Next up is Blue Light, who is 96 moons old now. Our spunky former kitty pet is getting old, sadly. The coin flip decided that he had caught the sickness too, and I know a lot of you wanted him to be deputy, but I don't think he minds much not getting the position. He's happy enough just being in the clan at all, I think. He does hope to get an apprentice one day, though. And one very interesting thing that Blue Light did this year was he had a prompt saying that he has a crush on someone, and it was very unexpected to see that he apparently is crushing on Burdock Star of all cats. I'm going to be honest, I think she only has eyes for her former mate Duskcloud, so who knows if this actually goes anywhere. But if they do end up getting together, um, I doubt that they would have kits due to Burdock Star's age. But it's interesting to see this development for a residential blue boy in general. This year actually had a lot of cats revealing crushes, so we'll see that more later in the video. Next cat up is Cinderpetal, who is now 64 moons old and is doing a lot better this year. Early in the year, he actually saw Squirrelpaw in his dreams, who told him not to waste his life thinking about his past or comparing himself to his brother Ravenspot. He was a great cat and he needed to live his life to the fullest. Taking this to heart, he did his best training a new apprentice Sandstar had given him, and they bonded greatly. They are like the best of buds, I can't wait to get into it. He also smoothed over his slightly prickly relationship with Burdock Star after the Stoneleaf incident, and they get along again now. After both of Ravenspot's sons died, Cinderpetal saw it was his turn to offer support as a brother, 
just as Ravenspot had offered when Stoneleaf's situation happened. The two brothers have never been closer now, and Cinderpetal has matured enough to be proud instead of jealous of him. I'm really happy Cinderpetal is doing better. He was another cat that a few of you thought would be a good deputy, but I think things were still a little iffy between him and Burdock Star at the time of her becoming leader, so I went with Ravenspot instead. Next up is Shrewpatch, who is now 40 moons old. She has had quite the eventful year, so first she ran into Creek Clan on a border patrol and lunged at Broken Tail, ignoring orders. I'm going to put a picture up now, so look away from the screen if you don't want to see some blood until I say it's gone, and it's going up now. During the attack, Broken Tail actually wounded her side pretty badly before the fight was broken up, and Shrewpatch felt humiliated as Broken Tail walked away victorious. And the picture's gone now. Shrewpatch's sister, Hopwhisker, then yelled at her for being reckless and disobeying Sansar's direct orders of not engaging in fights. Surprisingly, after all of this happened, Sansar assigned Aspen Runner's former apprentice to her after her death. My theory was he was trying to get her to focus on other things beside revenge and possibly trying to make up, trying to get her to make up with her sister, who was also a mentor at the time. She did her best training him and was a good mentor. After all the sickness and her mom becoming leader, she has become a little less insistent on revenge fantasies, choosing to focus on the clan for now. Meanwhile, for Sister Hopwhisker, she was yelling at her because she was worried. She doesn't want to end up losing her sister like she did with her brother. After leaving the nursery, Hopwhisker got one of Odd's kids as an apprentice, but we'll get to that in a bit. She was a really good mentor and made sure to do her best, but unfortunately, both her mate and her apprentice caught the sickness, and Hopwhisker was destroyed when her mate Twigclaw ended up dying. He had been the joyful spark that had melted her cold tendencies time and time again. She's been more closed off and short-tempered as she grieves, but she put extra effort into training her apprentice so she can make sure he has a great life in the future. She appreciates that Shrewpatch seems to have learned her lesson, but she's still annoyed over the previous arguments they had, and is still a bit snappy. Her mother has done her best to help her, as Burdock Star knows the pain of losing a mate too well. Next up is a new face in the clan, Cloudfur, and his name used to be Potato, and I miss it. He is a thoughtful 24 moon old, and is. it says that he was a former loner, but I think he's a kitty pet runaway. He was actually invited into the clan in the beginning of this year by Otter Kit, like literally the baby. And something happened on his first patrol that I decided to say was just what happened before he joined. So Potato had run into a fox and gotten injured. While he managed to get away, he was hurt badly. And at that same time, Otter Kit had snuck out of camp and ended up following the blood smell. And I have no idea how the clan lost the half-deaf kitten, but we're moving on. I'm going to put a picture up now with some blood, so warning to look away until I say it's gone, it's going on screen now. Otterkit ran into Potato and immediately led him back to camp to get help from the nice medicine cat friend, Lake Tree. I can only imagine what the clan fought when Otterkit came in with an injured guy. <laughs> and the picture is gone now. After getting to the clan, Potato changed his name to Cloudfur. Otterkit became good friends of him and that friendship has stuck around to present day. Cloudfur is adjusted well and is a bit more reserved in the clan. He's nice, but still feels a little awkward as he's not the best fighter and he has a big fear of foxes now. And that's Cloudfur. I actually really like him. Welcome to Galaxy Clan. I can't wait to see his future. Next up is Hopwhisker and Twigclaw's daughter, who has gained the warrior name Pale Path and is now 14 moons old. She has grown to be bold and a good teacher. Her mentor was Cinderpetal, and they got it to all kinds of things together. On their very first patrol, they crossed a quiet thunderpath and caught a ton of prey. And throughout the course of her training, they took on two different foxes and chased away a rogue. These two are both little rowdy cats, and Palepath loved the whole experience. She sung her praises to her family, which included Burdockfoot at the time, and that contributed to her eventually warming up again to Cinderpetal which I think was part of Sandstar's plan assigning her to him. I think he did a lot of planning this time when he assigned mentors. Palepath was hit hard by her dad's death, but Cinderpetal helped her keep her busy, and she's surrounded by a great support system. Most of the clan pretty much loves her. She's basically the clan princess right now, being Burdock Star's granddaughter. And if you remember, Lake Tree currently has a prophecy about a pale hope, but... We'll see if that's about her. Palepath actually has a little crush on Cloudfur at the moment, too, so 
We'll see if that goes anywhere in the future when she's a bit older. She just became a warrior, after all. But yeah, that's Pale Path. Let's move on. Because next up, we're talking about Odd Bat Babies, who are now warriors. First up is Otter Tail, who has become bold and has the very smart trait. He caught the sickness as an apprentice, and I already talked about how he snuck out of camp as a kit and brought back Cloud Fur. This boy is definitely living up to the legacy of Odd's chaos. He was assigned to Hop Whisker, who had been a queen in the nursery while he grew up, so she was well accustomed to his hearing disability. She was confident she could turn him into a great warrior, and the first thing she did was make him practice walking quietly. She was patient and drilled into him how to move without making sound, guiding him all the way. While he can hear a bit out of one ear, she made sure to fine-tune his other senses, so he'll always be alert of danger. And while the training was a bit tedious, Ottertail is now confident in his steps and is quite the good hunter now. He is often the first to scent danger, and he's very excited to finally be a warrior. He also has a crush on Pale Path and thinks she's super cool. Little does he know she has a crush on his best pal Cloudfur. That has the potential to be drama in the future, but hold on to the thought of drama because next up is Ottertail's brother Emberfeather. He is also very smart, but has grown to be a bit on the colder side. And I'm going to say right now that he also has a crush on Pale Path. Again, lots of potential love drama going on in the future, and I'm inter- interested to see how this develops. But Emberfeather was apprenticed to Aspen Runner, and on his very first patrol, they ran into a dog that Aspen Runner protected him from. He was really happy of her as a mentor until, unfortunately, she died from the sickness just one moon after he was apprenticed to her. He had caught it as well. Sansar then assigned him Shrewpatch as his new mentor, and he was not happy at all in the beginning. While Shrewpatch is a good teacher and she tried to be soft at him in the beginning, she is always a bit snappy, especially more so than Hop Whisker at times, and he wished for a softer guide like the one that had been taken from him. She did have her kinder moments, but his apprentice experience overall made him a bit cold to those around him. It does not help that his brother and him have a crush on the same girl. He doesn't hate Ottertail or anything like that, but they are in a bit of an unspoken competition right now for Pale Path's affection. Though they are aware that neither of them are entitled to it, and it's up to Pale Path to decide if she wants either of them in the first place. And that's all the warriors, and I actually want to end on the nursery for certain reasons, so let's hop over to the elders first. Ridge and Buzzard Daisy are still hanging in there at 156 moons and 152 moons old. So they are definitely getting up in age, and I'll be honest, I'm surprised they are still here. Over their time in the Elder's Den, they've definitely formed a close bond that I imagine is similar to Mouse Fur and Longtails in the actual books. And I'm not looking forward to whoever inevitably dies first. I feel like the other one is going to take it pretty hard. The Elder's Den has been filled with lots of whispers and gossip recently with the illness nicknamed Stonecough, as well as the new arrivals in the nursery. Ridge was sad to see her former apprentice Twigclaw pass and thinks it's unfair how so many cats got taken away at such young ages. Times are changing and it makes these two old cats nervous, but at least they have a lot more friends in the Elder's Den now. Speaking of, Whiskerheart has officially retired and is now 128 moons old. And she really just can't relax, can she? Because she actually caught the sickness as well, but she pulled through. With so many cats sick, it's no wonder Lake Tree was so stressed. I just want Whiskerheart to have a nice, comfy life in retirement from here on out. Is that too hard to ask for? At least she hasn't had any drama with any of the cats in the clan. Overall, things have been relatively calm. She is a little worried about the nursery situation that I'm sorry to continuously tease you about. But yeah, Whiskerheart's basically just chilling, and she should from now on. But there's really not too much to say about her, so let's just move on to the last elders. Odd and Bat. So technically Bat is going to retire in a month, but lore-wise, I just said he retired when Odd did. I don't think the clan minded too much. Odd is now 126 moons old, and Bat is 119. I'm hopeful for more Odd shenanigans, even if she's retired now. And the general consensus regarding Otter Kit's name reasonings was that she definitely knew the Sharp clan leader Otterstar at some point before any of the clans were formed. And a lot of people suggested potential past lovers, but they have quite a big age difference of like 60, 50 moons old. So I'm just going to stick with quirky friends. 
He's still alive, by the way, and is 176 moons old now. I think he's the oldest leader in any of the clans. I'd originally planned to quickly go over the other free clans briefly in this video, but I think this video is probably long enough, so we'll see about maybe in next video. But yeah, that's odd. On to Bat. And in the end, if I'm honest, Bat still never really did anything that well in the clan, but he's appreciated regardless. He's more of a storyteller these days, telling exaggerated tales from his past that most cats know are most likely lies, but they let him go on anyway. Kind of like a soul situation, but not evil. I think settling down was hard for him before joining the clan, but he's happy with his life with Odd, and he couldn't be prouder of his sons. I'm sad to see these two retire, but I'm happy they had kids before they did. And speaking of, let's finally get to the nursery. Inside is currently a new arrival to the clan. She was invited by Hopwhisker and Otterpaw. Her name is Frecklespot, and she is 95 moons old. And she's also bloodthirsty. Technically, she joined in-game with her kits already, but lore-wise, I'm saying she gave birth in the clan shortly after being invited. And oh boy, things got complicated. She has two sons. One is Bubble Kit and one is Pale Kit, which I'm going to assume she named just by looking around because she was lazy and she just took that from Pale Path's name. And this is why I made the There Still Lives a Pale Hope prophecy, there's two potential prophecy cats. I have plans that Burdockstar will change Pale Kit's prefix at the apprentice ceremony due to me personally not wanting the cats to have too many similar names. And Burdockstar would not want him to share a name with her granddaughter for certain reasons, so if you have name suggestions, let me know. Nothing mean. I'm keeping whatever the game generates his second half of his name is, though. In the future, I'll rename specifically only the kits that are born if they share it with someone who's living, unless there's a reason they'd be named after them. Now, the reason there's a bunch of unease about the nursery is because Pale Kit looks almost identical to Stoneleaf. And based on Frecklespot's age, I've decided this is Stoneleaf's mom. Stoneleaf joined the clan at the very beginning at only 11 moons old, and we never really questioned his past family or if he left anyone behind. And even more evidence this connection is, I've been looking at Stoneleaf's ghost, and at the same moon that Frecklespot joined the clan, he wanted to warn Burdock Star. So, yeah, I think they have a connection, and I think she's bad news if Stoneleaf is trying to warn them. Burdock Star has made a point to the clan that we are not to mention Stoneleaf at all yet. Not to mention, as soon as she joined, Aspen Liller and Mintfer got into fights of rogues that tore their ears. And I think it's connected. I don't know, it's suspicious that we ran into rogues way too often, right after she joined. As of right now, I don't know if these would be, like, potentially her friends? Or enemies? But I don't see good things in the clan's future with her in here. I am hopeful for Pale Kit. I really don't want him to end up growing up and being evil, but we'll have to see. I would love for a redemption thing. But yeah, that's year five of Galaxy Clan. We lost a lot of good cats this year, and there may be upcoming trouble due to Freckle Spot. Who do you think is the prophecy cat? Pale Path or Pale Kit? Again, I'd love name suggestions for Pale Kit. I'd love to hear who you're rooting for in that love drama going on. And with that said, I have a feeling this video got really, really long. If you enjoyed the video and haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, and check out my socials below. My commissions are open if you'd like to support me that way, and thank you for watching and being patient with Galaxy Clan. I try to update these series monthly, but it's a lot of art to do. With that said, I'll see you next week with, I think, a Pokemon Kajinkas video. Peace!